And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Revelation 12, 11. The key word there is overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of of their testimonies. That's the saints overcoming Satan. And this is why I'm sharing my testimony. I pray that my testimony of overcoming these um, emotional, uh, mental, psychological disorders that I was diagnosed with through the traumas and tragedies of my childhood, it will give you um, a sense of hope, strength to rise in the power and authority of Christ Jesus that was shed for us through his blood on Calvary. Amen. And my other favorite verse on this is 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, from all sin. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Where would we be without the blood of Jesus Christ shed on that cross for us? So I'm going to get right to it. Um, I am going to be sharing a message on healing, overcoming, emotional, spiritual battles, wholeness in Christ. Um, I'm going to be sharing a very personal, intimate testimony. Took me... From 7.45 until 1.30 to write this down. And as I was writing it down, I was really surprised that I was crying. I, I, I thought that I had cried all the tears there was to cry over some of these um, traumas that I had endured as a child. But apparently not. Um, it was still in me and um, I had to weep. Um, so lately I just felt a major oppression, not just within my own lives where um, I'm having to overcome, but I see it also in, you know, other brothers and sisters in Christ. It's like this spirit of heaviness, spirit of depression, spirit of discouragement, um, you know, emotional battles. You know, my ADT um, man was here just about three weeks ago and, um, He's a pastor of a Baptist church who's um, taking a leave right now because he's going through so much. Wonderful man of God, humble, full of the spirit, just beautiful in nature. And um, he was telling me how um, this gentleman that goes to his church had just committed suicide because the nephew of the gentleman had just committed suicide. All this just happened within the last month, you know, month and a half maybe. And um, I know there's other brothers and sisters um, that I'm aware of that are dealing with emotional battles, you know, to the point where they're hurting themselves and harming themselves. So I feel in my spirit that Satan has unleashed his demons upon us, the saints upon mankind, but he knows that his time is so short that he's doing everything he can. Everything that can be shaken, you know, will be shaken. And he is allowing, he's, he's, uh, he's given, he's been given me, uh, given permission to sift, um, God's people because everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And God wants us to, um, grow in the knowledge and grace of Christ Jesus and know who we are in him, know who he is and what he has done on that cross that purchased our salvation, but also our healing, our wholeness in him and abundant life and eternal life was purchased by his blood. And he wants us to rise up and live in the authority and the power and the peace and the presence, the joy of the Holy Ghost, the sanity that he paid for us. You know, the, the stripes on his backs, I heard somebody said 38 stripes on his backs were paid for our healing. You know, his stripes were paid for our sins and our healing. And I have that here in scriptures. But let me stop rambling because I have so much to share with you. Um, I want to go to um, the beginning where and how 
um, these demonic spirit comes into our lives, uh, whether knowingly or unknowingly, whether we open the door or our parents and great, you know, grandparents or ancestors open the door. Um, that's how they come in. And we who have been born again, we have the power to repent and say no more and walk in the light of Christ so that the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from all sin and put an end to the curses um, that has been opened and poured out upon our lives. One door, this is the top 10 doors, generational sins and curses, word curses, unforgiveness, judgments against people, occult sin, sexual sin, ungodly soul ties, pride, broken covenants and vows, severe abuse trauma. And I can tell you real quickly, this is just 10. Um, I was guilty of every one of them. Whether on my own accord, when I opened the door to these sins or the sins of my father, forefathers, mothers, grandmothers, ancestors, the sins of my nation. Um, you, some of you have already heard about my um, testimony um, out of the killing fields, you know, through fields of grace, how the Lord delivered me, my family, um, my brother out of there. Um, from being um, <sighs> from being butchered to death. I don't know how else to say it. Um, and, you know, we ran for our lives from the time I was two and a half till up to around seven We were f when we were finally in the refugee camps in Thailand. So for all those many years, the most impressionable years of a child, I ran for my life all those years dodging death in various forms, sleeping in banana fields, you know, um, going through rivers and mountains and wilderness and jungles. Um, so lots of trauma came from that. And then I lost my father. He perished and my baby brother perished along with two millions plus of my people perished in that genocide. It was uh, literally hell unleashed on earth. And I'm afraid to say it, but I believe that's going to happen again in the near future, um, you know, around the world. But um, we're not going to go there. That's a different topic altogether. Um, so these are the open doors of curses into my life, into our life. When these doors are open, then the demons and their cohorts have legal rights and access to come into our lives to harass, torment, and ultimately steal, kill, and destroy um, our health, our relationship, our mind, our soul, everything about us, you know, um, it has rights and access to try to destroy us. Wherever and whenever there is sin, there is the devil and his demons. Now I'm going to go through a list of demonic spirits. These spirits are demonic because it is not the spirit of God, which I will cover later in scriptures. Um, one is spirit of jealousy and envy, spirit of heaviness, spirit of whoredoms, lust, pornography, rape, spirit of infirmity, sickness, spirit of divination, spirit of bondage. And bondage is like legalism, you know, an example is like salvation by works for Ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Romans 8, 15. We serve God, our Father, because we love Him and because we are so thankful for His mercies upon us. That's why we serve Him. We don't serve Him to get saved, but we serve Him because we are saved. Amen. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Wow. God wants our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. For well, without holiness, no one will see God. And that is our reasonable service to him because he gave his one and only begotten son 
to die for us on that cross, to redeem us to himself, to purchase us back out of the grip of Satan, back to himself. So in return, he wants our whole being, our lives, our bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to him. And seven is spirit of slumber, sleep, sleep apnea. You can read more about it in Romans 8, 15. Spirit of the world, worldliness, you know, the love of the world and anything and everything of the world is not of the father, but of the world of the devil. Nine, spirit of fear. This was huge um, in my life. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 7 fear of abandonment that was me rejection betrayal fear of failure the only healthy fear that we are to have is the fear of Almighty God Psalm 23 17 18 says let not thine heart envy sinners but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off there is an end and it is coming soon. But if we fear the Lord, our expectation, our hope will not be cut off. And our hope is in our Lord Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And then Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. We should only fear God. Amen. 10. Spirit of Antichrist, false religion. Now this spirit of Antichrist, as we can see with our natural eyes, we don't even need spiritual discernment for that, but is rampant in our nation right now around the world. You know, the riots, the violence, the hatred, the division, um, the scandals behind the scenes, the schemings behind the scenes um, that our politicians are up to is um, mind boggling. The wickedness, you know, of um, um, abortions in third term trimesters now and it's, you know, legalized gay marriages just it doesn't end. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. But there's also the spirit of Antichrist inside the church walls. These are denominations, religions, traditions of man, where they worship the precepts of man as opposed to the precepts and the doctrine and the full gospel of Jesus Christ that he commanded in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 20th. Amen. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. 12. Familiar spirits. This is a spirit that follow a family from one generation to generation. And with me, um, I'll just name a few. Uh, yes, there's great qualities in everybody's family. And there's also bad, ugly, evil traits in um, some families like mine. Um, on my father's side that I have heard of and known, they were addicted to um, covetousness. Heard my great grandfather from China own gold shops, um, also had an entertainment um, industry where he took from nation to nation. That's how he met my Thai grandmother in Thailand and brought her to Cambodia. And that's where I was born, Cambodia. But um, so, uh, you, you know, money, um, wealth, um, that was their thing. And then also they were addicted to um, gambling and um, some type of drugs, uh, I want to say, poppies um heron heron i can't even say that word heroin i think that's how you say it unsure something like that um some type of infirmity for sure rage and violence and adultery those are just a few and of course they were buddhist worshippers so there's another one it the evil were endless so it's no surprise that I had so much curses upon my life. No surprise. These are familiar spirits. And um, it follows uh, from one generation to the next up to four generations, according to, I think, Numbers and Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Until somebody repents and get cleansed by the blood of Jesus and that somebody is me. Amen.
in my family. 13. Seducing spirits. Now the spirit speaketh expressly, but in the later times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy 4.10. One of the uh, modern day doctrine of devil is the once saved, always saved. Basically, um, they believe that you say a little sinner's prayer, get baptized, and you're saved. So whether you're living in sin or not, you're saved. You have the Spirit of God because you said your prayer and you got baptized and um, that is a lie from the devil. We have to repent and turn from our sins and follow Jesus. Pick up our cross and follow him and abide in him. Obey his word. Hebrews 5, 9 says that salvation is for those who obey him. And God gives his Holy Spirit to those who obey him. That's all scriptural. And it's not what the once saved, always saved doctrine teaches. Now 14, lying spirit. Don't really have to go over that. Lying spirit everywhere that's plaguing our nation, including our churches. 15, haughty spirit, a prideful spirit. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. And the last one that I'm going to share, and these are just a few, um, is perverse spirit. It's like spirit of lust, sexual immorality, incest, molestations, homosexuality, lesbianism, sodomy, etc. Anything that is perverse out of order, out of the order of God, um, what God had ordained, like, you know, same sex marriage, incest and um, things like that. Pornography, they're all perverted. These spirits were transmitted into my young life through sexual abuses from the time I was about five to twelve. And verbal, emotional, psychological abuses from my caretaker of how he wished I was dead. I remember him shouting over and over again for many um, years from the time I was 12 till I, the time I was 15 until I had to be removed from the home. Um, he shouted at my brother to kill me. Killer! Killer! And the reason why he hated me so much was because... Um, after the Lord had convicted me and opened my eyes to see the wickedness behind the pornography and the um, abuses um, behind closed doors that were our secrets. Um, the Lord opened my eyes at age 12 to see how wicked and evil it was. And I made a vow that I would never allow him to touch me like that again. So he hated me like he wanted me dead instead of alive and that was the ultimate betrayal to my little heart because i loved him truly adored him and i saw once he shouted kill her kill her kill her i realized that he never loved me it was all a lie and i felt worthless like a piece of used up garbage that should be tossed away so um that was the ultimate betrayal um, that I felt that I lived in. Excuse me for a second. Excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I lived in this environment of major strife, oppression, shame, great shame, depression, pain, and hearing and dodging day by day. Of how, in, how the person I loved wished I was dead until I was 15. So needless to say, it was, an emotion, it was emotionally, psychologically, mentally traumatizing to my soul. So somehow between all those years of abuse, trauma, tragedies from the war, the killing fields, and what went on in the back rooms in, you know, in secret, after feeling abandoned, rejected, betrayed, betrayed, I eventually learned to hate myself. I had a spirit of self-hatred that ultimately led to my suicide attempt 10 years later. But praise the Lord, Jesus in his mercy came to me as I was trying to slit my left wrist with a dull razor. And he said, hell is real. Hell is real and you don't want to go there. And he said again, because I wasn't sure. So I wasn't sure if that was my thoughts that were speaking to me. So I kept on trying to 
slice my left wrist. And he said once more, hell is real and you don't want to go there. And when I heard that the second time, I put down the razor and I just cried out to God in the shower. And I just like, God, I don't know who you are. I don't care who you are. I just want to die. I just want to die. Please let me die. I've had enough, enough pain in this life to know there cannot be a good God. If there was a God, he cannot be a good God. And so I just cried out to God with all my heart, without, with all my soul. And I just, you know, every day just continued to be high and drunk um, from morning to night till I passed out. And um, two weeks after that was when the Lord appeared to me in a massive form of glorious heavenly light. I'm talking about huge, like round you know, eight by eight round circular lights with um, all the colors that you would find in the galaxy, you know, the stars, and, you know, the purple, red, um, bright gold, shimmering, uh, iridescent. Uh, if you pull up, you know, galaxy, you'll see all those colors. That's what I'm talking about, but it's vibrating. And then he spoke out of that. He spoke John 10, 10 to me, the thief comes not but to kill, steal and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life more abundantly, choose life. And then he also told me and showed me that there's two roads in life. There's blessings and then there's curses, choose life, come to me. And so I did. And that's when I became born again in the presence of my redeemer. And I was able to raise up my arms for the first time. And I shouted, hallelujah. And I just praise God in his presence and the chains of oppression, depression broke everything, just broke off of me. And I was free and I was free to praise my God and um, songs, you know, like hymn songs, songs of praise and worship just poured out of my being, living water. And um, I was a heathen for so long. I didn't know those songs. So it was by the spirit of God living water, his living water that um, came forth and out of my mouth as I was shouting, dancing and praising my God that night. And that was, uh, I want to say September 4th, 1998. So it's been um, over 18 years ago now. But um, anyways, get back to my notes. <laughs> um, to walk with God, he requires truth, honesty, transparency, and um, this is what God calls worshiping him in spirit and in truth in John, I believe, chapter four. God is truth. God is light. In him, there is no darkness. We must repent of our sin and turn from our evil ways and follow him. We must obey. So obedience, faith and purity and sanctification, which is walking in purity, walking in the light of his presence as he is in the light. That's all it is. That's what it means. Isaiah 65, 16 says, because he who is blessed in the earth will be blessed by God of truth. And he who swears in the earth will swear by the God of truth. God is a God of truth. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. So every scripture that I'm sharing with you right now, is truth is God because God is truth in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God God is his word amen forever and ever and ever they cannot be divided John 10 9 through 11 says I am the gate if anyone enters through me he will be saved he will come in and go out and find pasture the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I've come that they may have life and have it in all its fullness, in all its fullness. Full of what? Full of peace, joy, sanity. Amen. Contentment, fulfillment, satisfaction. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was wounded. For our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities or sins. The chastisement, chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. With the stripes on Jesus back, we are healed. 
all forms of infirmities and sickness. Now that's up to you to believe it or not, but I believe it. I know his word is true. I know he purchased not only my salvation, but my healing, my wholeness, so that I will have life to the fullness. Amen. I believe the word of God. I believe his promises. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord, because they call thee an outcast. I was definitely an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. So I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. <clears throat> now, obedience. Oh, one more. Now, it is our decision to go after God's healing that he has for us, or we can choose to live our way, ignoring all of his words and his promises and his statutes, his commandments that gives us the fullness of life in Christ. John 5.40 says, Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. And also somewhere in John it says, uh, Those with the Son have life. Those without the Son does not have life. Life is in the Son of God. Amen. Now obedience. Exodus 15.26 says, And he said, If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have put on the Egyptians for I, the Lord am your healer. Amen. Our God is a healing God. Amen. First John 3, 21, 22 says, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Again, it's all about him. It's all about his word. It's all about pleasing him. I don't know how... You know, he can put it clearer than that. Let me read that again. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Not pleasing in our sight, but pleasing in his sight. Our creator, our maker, our redeemer, our God and our king. He's the one that matters, not our opinion. Amen. Psalm 107 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. This is why it is imperative that we hear the word of God, we read the word of God, we obey the word of God because his word heals us. His word is life. His word is everything, his inheritance. His word is him. Amen. Acts 3.16, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know has been made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given him this complete healing in your presence. I'm going to put my name on there. Listen this. By faith in the name of Jesus, Lachana, whom you see and now has and know has been made strong because I was weak, weak, weak weak super super weak the weakest of the weak it is jesus name and the faith that comes through her that has given her this complete healing in your presence amen in the presence of god we are made whole in the presence of god there is liberty there's healing there's restoration there's redemption there is power there's victory there's joy there's songs there's praises all in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. John 5, 13 through 15 says, But the man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away while the crowd was there. Afterward, Jesus found the man in the temple and said to him, See, you have been restored. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. And the man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. 
If God has made you whole, has healed you in whatever areas of your life, like he has mine, we must stop sinning or else the demons that he delivered us from will come back and bring seven other more wicked demons to come dwell in us. And that is scriptural. I deleted it, but it's, it's, um, it's um, I don't know where it is, but it's, it is in the Bible. You can seek it out for yourself. He will bring back seven demons more powerful than himself to come dwell in our temple if the Holy Spirit is not in there and we're not living in the light of his presence. Amen. As he is in the light. God desires that we prosper, but we cannot prosper if our soul is shattered and not made whole from the inside out. And only the blood of Jesus can make us whole mind, body, spirit, and soul. Life is in the blood. No blood of Jesus in and over our life, then there is no life in God within us. Leviticus 17, 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. It is the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, poured out, shed on that cross of Calvary that made atonement that gave us healing, wholeness, salvation, only because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your great sacrifice. And 3 John 1, 2-3 says, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may prosper and enjoy health as your soul also prospers. For I was overjoyed when the brothers came and testified about your devotion to the truth in which you continue to walk. We must continue to walk in the truth, in the light of God's presence, with His Holy Spirit. Amen? Excuse me. First John 1, 6-8 says, If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Friends, we must be honest, truthful with ourselves, with others and with God. Transparency is the key to intimate fellowship with an all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful, holy and righteous God who is both healer and judge. His desire for us is only good and wholeness and abundant life of joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, in His Spirit. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's Romans 14, 17. That is what is it, what it's like, what it is to have the kingdom of God, to have the Holy Spirit in us, joy, peace, and righteousness. Amen. We are what we eat. Jesus wants us to eat his word. God's word is the bread of heaven. He is the manna from heaven for our sustenance and wholeness. God gave his children the Holy Spirit, his living water from heaven that never runs dry to drink in his abundant and eternal life. His salvation and his gift of salvation does not begin when we die, but the moment we repent, believe and baptize by the Holy Spirit of God. When our hearts are converted from death into life, darkness into his light, this is called born again by the Spirit of God. John 3, 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, his Spirit, with a capital S, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. John 3, 6. No way to fellowship with Jesus and enjoy any of his great benefits and inheritance 
apart from the Holy Spirit. Acts 5.32 says, And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. So repentance and obedience is a must for the Holy Ghost to come dwell in our hearts. He will not occupy unclean vessels and share his throne with other idols. He is holy and he demands command sovereignty over our lives. Acts 2.38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent will give you remission of sins, but we must repent and turn. Amen. We must have the Holy Ghost in our lives. He is the Spirit of God who fills our dry and thirsty soul with his living water. And he also cleanses us with his living water. Ezekiel 36, 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Amen. It is God, the Holy Spirit, who cleanses us. Amen. To him, uh, to have him living and operating his power in our lives, we must denounce from all forms of idolatry. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry, 1 Corinthians 10, 14. And 2 Corinthians 6, 16 says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. I want to mention um, a little bit about idols. In these days, in age today, um, in our nation, we do not bow down to statues. Um, I know that um, I believe the Catholics do. Um, they worship different statues like Mary, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. James the Father, the Pope, whatever, those are all idolatry. And God, that is an abomination to the Lord. He will not have us worshiping idols. Um, he is God and God alone. He is sovereign and he alone is worthy of our worship. Another form of idolatry is us. You know, we can be our own idol. We do what we want to do. We watch what we want to watch. We listen to what we want to listen to. We play what we want to play to. We spend our money on what we want to spend our money to. It, there's nothing in us that cries out to God and give him, you know, a priority and um, first place in our hearts, in our lives. But when we are surrendered to the Holy Spirit, the first person we think of before we make decision is him. You know, we ask him. You know, Father, Lord, is this all right? Is this pleasing to you? Or would you have me do this? Or would you have me um, avoid it, flee it, you know, walk away from it? So we always put God first in our decision, in our thoughts, in our lives, in every area of our lives. And that is worshiping God in spirit and in truth. But when we are in idolatry, we could care less about what God thinks, what his word says. We do not acknowledge him. We do not worship him. We do not praise him. We do not read his word. We do not pursue fellowship with him. We spend hours and hours pursuing our own selfish gain, hobbies, and um, things that feeds our flesh, our passion, our lust. Nothing at all about God. So that is idolatry. And God hates idolatry. John 15, 3 says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Matthew 4, 23 to 24 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. He that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning. 
For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is why Jesus Christ came to earth. He knew that we could not save ourselves. He knew that we were too weak for the devil, for Satan and, the, and our enemy. So he came to destroy the work of the devil to deliver us from the power of darkness. Amen. Excuse me again. My throat is so dry. Power in the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> purchased the blood of Jesus purchased many things for a repentant sinner other than salvation. I found a powerful blog from Pastor Colin Smith I wanted to share with you. Um, the, the blood of Jesus purchased salvation and it also gives us access to worship God in boldness, forgiveness of our sin, conscience cleanse, continually being changed and cleansed from glory to glory, conquer the accuser Satan who goes to and fro up and down the earth accusing God's children day and night, rescued us out of a sinful life to serve the living God, <clears throat> and also it gives us um, the highest position, which is to be children of God, co-heirs of Christ Jesus. Amen. So riches and authority that God gives gave Jesus are also ours because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Wow. These are just a few. Salvation includes healing. <clears throat> so this is what um, Pastor Smith wrote in his blog, and it is so good that um, and very relevant to my testimony. So I want to share it with you. One, we gain bold access to God in worship and prayer. The Bible is clear that every person is alienated and separated from God because of our sin. Colossians 1.21. That means even the best of us are actually unable to approach God to offer worship or prayer because of our sins. We remain at a distance from him. But the Bible tells the Christians to come boldly into God's presence. We have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, 19. So if you're a Christian today, you can have boldness and confidence as you approach God with your prayers and your worship because you are no longer far away from God. Now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been made near by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2.13. It is because of the blood of Jesus Christ that we have the great privilege of pouring our hearts out to God. Psalm 62.8. Casting our cares on him. 1 Peter 5.7. And praying anytime at any place in the power of the spirit. Ephesians 6.18. Does your prayer life reflect the kind of relationship you have with God through the blood of his son? That's a great question. I pray it does. Two, forgiveness of sin. Ephesians 1 7 says in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace hallelujah because of Christ shed blood God is able to forgive us for our sins and give the punishment that we deserve to Christ thank you Lord thank you thank you three conscious consciences cleanse through the blood of Christ Christians receive the cleansing of their conscience consciences Hebrews 9 14 says how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God amen hallelujah for we are progressively cleansed from more and more sin not only are we forgiven from sin but we are also sanctified through the blood of Christ Hebrews 13, 12 says, Jesus also suffered in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Hebrews 13, 12. God is calling his people to be holy as he is, which is one of the reasons Jesus suffered. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14. Amen. 
So after we are forgiven of our sins and able to enter into a new relationship with God, it makes sense that God wants us to be in a new relationship with the sin that previously condemned us as well. That God wants us. That, that didn't make sense. That is why he gives us the power through the blood of his son to be cleansed from our sinful behaviors. There's power in the blood to break the power of sin. Amen. Five, we are able to conquer the accuser of the brethren. Because of Christ's sacrifice and the pouring out of his blood on our behalf, we can trust in the righteousness of Christ and not our own righteousness when we are accused by our enemy. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they have conquered him, Satan, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives unto death. Now, I'm getting to my personal testimony that's a little bit difficult to share. But I will share it after I get this sip of water. Because my throat is so dry, I feel like I'm about to pass out. <laughs> Excuse me, so many interruptions. <clears throat> In late summer of 2008, I was going through a separation and counseling with my former husband. We were married for about eight years. The kind, gentle hearted, spirit filled Christian psychotherapist was the first counselor that I believe diagnosed me accurately. I had sought out two other Christian counselors before during my first year of marriage, then the third year of my marriage, and then he was the last one in our seventh year of marriage. But they could not touch the deep hidden wounds, soul wounds that I had battled with most of my life. I didn't know what they were and they didn't know what they what, what it was that was hurting me inside. They were all nice believers, but couldn't rightly discern it. So by the time I got to this psychotherapist, my third counselor, my heart was already hardened and had already rebelled against the Lord and made up my mind to go forward with the divorce. This man of God diagnosed me with BPD, stands for Borderline Personality Disorder. As he described it in details to me, I knew in my heart of heart, he had hit it on the head. For the first time, I knew exactly the name of my demon that was sent to destroy every aspect of my life through the brokenness of my soul. It was sent to kill, steal, and destroy all relationship in my life, my health, peace, joy, sanity, etc. So I accepted this diagnostic of my condition in defeat, shame, and brokenness. Tears rolled down my cheeks. Tears of pain and shame, but tears of relief of finally having a name for that demon. I knew that was within me and controlling me all these years. But as I was sitting there feeling defeated and worthless, and no use to anyone, including myself. By this time, I was a mom of two young boys. <sighs> Jaden was five, almost five. And Micah was barely two. The voice of the Holy Spirit arose from deep within me. He said to me, don't worry, this is nothing that my blood didn't overcome, and you will overcome this too. Immediately, my spirit man was quickened and rose to new hope and faith, knowing that by the precious blood of Jesus, I would overcome this demon as well. I want to just briefly describe to you what causes BPD, what doors open to um, bring this um, disorder into my life and maybe someone you know um, can relate. One is chronic fear or distress. Most of my life was lived in chronic fear and distress. 
gripped by paralyzing fear, fear of death, fear of butchered to death, fear of being left alone to fend for myself in this big, ugly world in the eyes of a child. Family instability. That was for sure. Sexual or physical abuse. That was for sure. From the time I was 5 to 15. Sexual, emotional, and verbal abuse. Neglect. Majorly. All orphans are neglected. Losing a parent. I lost both. My father to death. <clears throat> and my mother we were separated, and we're still separated to this day. I've seen her three times, though, since. Now, the symptoms of BPD is this. I often feel, I often feel empty, and I still struggle with that. Even with Christ, that feeling would come and taunt me, and I would have to arise, you know, and start worshiping the Lord, put on praise and worship, read the word of God, draw close to the Lord so that that emptiness would go away. Because I'm not empty. I'm not lonely. I have God Almighty and he's always with me. My emotions shift very quickly. I often experience extreme sadness, anger, and anxiety. Now, because of the Holy Spirit, this is more under control. Thank God. I'm constantly afraid that people I care about will abandon me or leave me. I'm good with this unless they give me reasons, unless I see evidence that they were doing something that, that was behind my back, that betrayed me. Then these horrible, painful emotions would come up again. I would describe most of my romantic relationship as intense, but unstable. That was true. The way I feel about people in my life can dramatically change from one moment to the next, and I don't always understand why that was true. I often do things I know are dangerous or bad for me, such as drive, driving recklessly, I drove 120 miles an hour on Highway 60, bypassing cars on both lanes, screaming, shouting the whole time. I was beyond reckless. Having unsafe sex, binge drinking, doing drugs, or going on a spending spree. All of that was me. I've attempted to hurt myself, engage in self-harm behavior such as cutting or threaten suicide. That was me. Now, this is what the Spirit of the Lord is. And you'll see a major contrast between the Spirit, <clears throat> the demonic Spirit that I described to you earlier that were tormenting me, and the Spirit of the Lord that rules me now. Doesn't mean I'm always perfect and I always behave like this, but His fruit is ever increasing in my life because I have come to trust Him and to surrender to Him. Galatians 5, 22-23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Rescued, oh, and number six of what the blood, Jesus, blood of Jesus has done for us is rescued us out of a sinful way of life. You were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as gold or silver, my water, but with precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19. This truth is expressed beautifully in the hymn, Nothing But the Blood. I was going to try to sing this for you, but <clears throat> my throat, my voice is about to be gone. <clears throat> what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Hallelujah. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Again, I say to you, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Revelation 12, 11. I believe that everything is overcome, is met by the precious blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. God bless you. I love you all. Thank you for watching.